uh, Dakota Hewitt from uh, Charles City the, and uh, Colin Cotta from Wakan. Cotta with a 14-19 record, Hewitt with a 1-3 record. Hewitt in the lineup because of the injury to uh, Johnny Ethington. Etherington. Ranked number two in the state, uh, but because of concussions, his uh, wrestling career is likely done. Just unfortunate for the young man, but at the same time, you want to have your wits about you when you're 30 years old. Uh, that's right. They put a real emphasis on uh, concussions and concussion diagnosis the last year or two, and, and uh, I'm sure it's all for the better of the sport. 120 pounds over here. It's Charles City with the lead at uh, 120. They're going to go through uh, all the uh, fifth place matches and then uh, third and fourth and first and second matches, I'd imagine, here as uh, Lazar leading Hansmeyer here at 120 pounds. Wasn't a fifth place match at 106 or at 113. Cole Parmalee of Owine in fifth and uh, at 106, and Miles Ramsey of Walk On finished fifth at 113 pounds. So placing matches uh, already upon us. As perhaps they're hit, putting the pedal to the middle uh, with some uh, snow coming in. Lazar uh, tried to get some uh, get a turn there. Wasn't able to do it. To end of the first period here at 120 pounds. Uh, Lazar of Charles City with a two nothing lead on Hansmeyer. We've had two stalling calls against Kata here in the 126-pound match, and so uh, we've got uh, Hewitt leading one nothing going into the second period. Kata chooses down. And we'll have coverage of the sectional wrestling tournament from West Union next Saturday. Our coverage will begin at about uh, noon next Saturday. We'll have live hold-by-hold -hold coverage here on the internet, and we'll have updates on our uh, on Real Radio at FM 100.5 as well. Kind of hits a nice switch there to, to pull into a two-to-one lead. Now he's got a half in, uh, trying to drive uh, Hewitt over. Hewitt uh, gets his head up, breaks the half. Cotta riding on top. Still got the half in, but he's on the wrong side. Got to jump over the legs. Now he comes over the legs. Got a little more, get a little bit more chest to chest. There he brings him over. Got a one count, or he got a two count. And uh, now a six nothing lead over here for Lasher at uh, 120 pounds for Charles City. With 50 seconds left here in the second period, he's got a two count there, makes it 4 1. <coughs> Colin Cotta over Dakota Hewitt, Charles City. And Lazar just got a fall. Nate Lazar of uh, Charles City gets the fall to finish fifth place. At uh, in 200 min or three minutes and 25 seconds, and that's at 120 pounds. And we'll move on to 132 over here in the mat to our right. Mitchell Snicker of Walk On and Chase Hershey of Owine. We're still at winding down the second period, four to one lead to. Uh, Cotta from Wakan over Hewitt from Charles City. Getting more back points on the edge of the mat. Three more. Be seven. Nothing. Colin Cotta over Dakota Hewitt. Hewitt chooses to go neutral. Tyler Shattuck of New Hampton. In a scramble situation, trying to uh, score against Hershey of Owine. Now we've got a takedown by Hewitt, and uh, make the score 7-3. Hewitt looking for a cradle. Connor's got to realize he's got to wrestle this uh, third period. Yeah. 118 left here in the first period, no score. Both men still in that scramble situation. No points awarded yet by Eric Eckerman. 
Well, Cod is up and away, make it 8-3. And Shattuck now gets the takedown to make it a 2-0 margin. Of course, uh, if you win here by a regular decision, it's a one, and it's an extra point in the team standings. And yeah, Waverly is uh, well out in front in the uh, team standings, but the rest of the standings, uh, 13 points separating second and fifth right now. Cotta with another takedown and two more back. Makes it 12-3. Uh, Shattuck with a takedown, Hershey with an escape, and it is a 2-1 lead for uh, Shattuck of New Hampton at uh, 132 pounds. And we've got on the edge of the mat, it looks like we've got two more points to take down for Cotta. He comes up with a half, puts a half in. It's out to the side, doesn't have the hips turned yet, but he's getting back points nevertheless. Now he picks up a leg. Flattens out Hewitt. <laughs> and a three point near fall. He's at 17 4. And they go to bounds. So it looks like uh, Callan Cota of Wacom is going to finish fifth here at uh, 126 pounds. Shattuck going to the second period at 132. They 2-1 advantage on Hershey of Owain. They're in our fifth place matches this afternoon. All of these are placing matches from now on. Dakota wins 17 to 4. And so we got a major decision for Colin Cotta. Another extra point. And walk on. So up next year at 138 there. And we've got uh, Isaac Mitchell from Decora against uh, Nathan Benzing from Wacon. Hershey trying for the big throw, doesn't get it inbounds. It's 2-2 Hershey and Shattuck as we go to the one minute mark of the second period. And uh, Mitchell and uh, Benzing. Benzing uh, Welcome back to the unseated 9-6 sophomore. Isaiah Mitchell is up in the fifth seed spot, 5-19. Both of them, both, uh, both young men, sophomores. And, uh, 132 on the other match between uh, New Hampton and Old Wine, still 2 2. We've got uh, nothing, nothing there with minutes left in the period. Both boys feeling each other out on their feet. Nobody's taking, really, nobody's taking a shot yet. Second period in the other match, Joe Wine makes a shot. Or We've got Isaiah Mitchell over here with a uh, uh, head inside single on uh, Nathan Benzing, working near the edge of the mat. Got to take him backwards. Need to get looking for the far leg. He grabs the far leg and takes Nathan Benzing to the mat to lead 2 nothing with 28 seconds left in the first period. And go out of bounds. Start the third period with uh, New Hampton down. And uh, Owain on top. They go out of bounds. Owain, uh, New Hampton gets a point there. Lead 3-2. We come back to the slap mat two. Caution there on uh, Mitchell. Isaiah gets set. Benzing uh, tries to sit out. Mitchell goes into a crab ride and uh, exposes his back for a count of one. Nothing there. Still got the leg in. Come back over, trying to crank him toward his back. Got to be a little careful, he didn't pin himself. But got to thread the half through a little bit better. Got in the count of two now. One second left. And that's the time. End of the first period. Isaiah Mitchell up four to nothing over Nathan Benzing from Wacon. 
On the other mat, it's still 3-2. Uh, uh, New Hampton leading O-line. 120, or 132. And uh, we're on mat number two. Started both up with uh, Isaiah Mitchell still uh, four, to two, four to nothing lead. Benzing Edge. makes the shot. Mitchell comes in, puts front headlock on, trying to work, get around behind. Uh, Benzing comes to his feet. Doesn't look like anything will come of it. 43 seconds left here in the third period between Shattuck and Hershey. Hershey leading by a 3-2 margin right now. Benzing with a shot, uh, blocked by Mitchell's front headlock. Mitchell posts the arm and comes around behind. He's not behind yet, but he's working. Now he tries to throw him by. Benzing faces him and they come back to their feet. Minute 12 seconds left in the second period. Still 4-2. Isaiah Mitchell over Nathan Benzing. 3-2 two, two lead here for Shattuck of New Hampton on Hershey of Owain. 14 seconds left here in the third period. This is for fifth place at 132 pounds. Benzing makes a shot from quite a ways away. Uh, Mitchell catches him uh, under the arm and tries to whip him over. Can't do it. Didn't, didn't throw it hard enough. But a nice way to end the match. And the period comes to a close, and the match comes to a close at 132 pounds. Shattuck will get the victory. Tyler Shattuck of New Hampton winning by a 3-2 margin over Chase Hershey of Owain. And uh, 138, yeah. Isaiah Mitchell in control over there. Yeah, got a nice take down here. The end of the second period, 12 seconds left. Makes it 6-0. Isaiah Mitchell over Nathan Benzie. And time now for 145 over on mat number one. Cole Christopher of Decorah. And Drew Bating of New Hampton. Christopher of Decor and uh, Bating of New Hampton on uh, mat number one at 145. Starting the third period, uh, Benzing on top, Mitchell on bottom. motion out on the mat in a circle, but Benzing hangs on, and, and just right now he sticks the leg in. Leg came in pretty easy. Mitchell on the bottom. No score between Christopher and Bating. We're 30 seconds in. Here on mat number one. Mitchell's got to know. He's got to keep wrestling. Just because he's ahead 6-0, there's two minutes left. You can get yourself a team point, and heck, if you get a, another takedown here, you can get a bonus team point. That's right. That's right. And uh, and we need them. We need them. Bike sitting in sixth place heading into this round. Second and fifth being separated by a total of 13 points right now as Waverly Shorak has established themselves with a 27 and a half point lead heading into uh, this round of competition. Nice switch try by uh, Isaiah, but uh, and he's got it. Come all the way around and got it. Just, just kept after it, kept the pressure on, and uh, makes it eight to nothing. So we've got uh, we've got a bonus point as well as an additional placement point here. Uh, try got the leg in, trying to thread a half. He's got uh, picking up back points, and he's got a five count. And 35 seconds left. And a, and a takedown here for Baiting on mat number one. And at the end of the first period, Baiting takes 2 0 lead on Cole Christopher of Decorah. And uh, Isaiah Mitchell still working for the fall. Still working for the fall. Now he comes out over Benzing's head. And uh, he needs got the fall right there, and he gets a he gets a fall. So nice. Isaiah in 5:54. Two bonus points. Two bonus points. Three points for that win. 
And here is uh, Baining has uh, Christopher on his back on mat number two, but Cole trying to roll through. Baining is going to give that arm up to make it a five, a five to nothing lead, but once he gives the arm up, Christopher comes around and gets a reversal, and it is a 5-2 lead now for Baiting with a minute 25 left here in the second period. And we got another decor on New Hampton, fifth place match over here on mat number two, 152 pounds. We've got Blake Courtney, freshman, uh, eight wins, 18 losses against uh, Lucas, or uh, Adam Worser, 11 wins, 26 losses, a junior from uh, New Hampton. Courtney with a front headlock, trying to get around behind, and they go out of bounds. And work in the center of the mat. Now we've got Court. Now we got Christopher with baiting on his back, really tight, and he's got the fall. Cole yeah. Christopher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Looking down and yeah. looked away for a second, and yeah. uh, that's what I get for that. Cole Christopher well, with a come from behind victory, uh, getting the fall at uh, 145 pounds. And uh, 308. He lived up to his seat. That's where he was placed in the, in the brackets. Fifth. Uh, come back for a win. So he moves on and uh, faces and uh, gets fifth place uh, here this afternoon. And, and again with bonus points. So there's six points between those two last matches. There's six, six points, points we, yep. that we gained. Uh, and four that uh, four additional points with the falls. Yeah, right. Just two with the placing and uh, uh, four more with the falls. So yeah. Courtney and Wurzer uh, here on uh, mat number two, and now here on mat number uh, one, it is Chris Guest of New Hampton and David Miller of Wacott. And we've got a two-point takedown by uh, Adam Werzer over uh, Blake Courtney. And I don't think Owen has had any this round so far. I, well, they, yeah, when they put as many in the finals as they did, they uh, have not, uh, I don't think they do have anybody uh, going in this round of competition. Guest uh, now with his man on his back. Guest has Miller on his back with a minute. 19 left here in period number one, but Miller is going to roll through and get a reversal. Guest gets three back points. Miller gets two reversal. It's a 5-4 lead, and now Miller with a uh, underhook stepping through has Guest on his back, but Guest is going to roll through. And uh, A lot of craziness going on on mat number one right now. Mat number two, Wurzer sort of near fall points at the very, very end of the match to lead 4-0, um, and then... Uh, Courtney chose down, and Wurzer decided to let him up, so he just makes it four to one. An intentional release by Wurzer. Wurzer tries a headlock, gets out the side very poor, but he takes Courtney over, and he gets the two, has Courtney on his back. Well, we need work on defending that headlock, because that really wasn't a very good one. He didn't have any pop to it at all, but we just went right down to our back, and uh, Adam Wurzer gets the fall. 233 so. in the town of the fall there at uh, 152 pounds. And there's the fall for uh, Miller of uh, Wacon in a minute 42 at 160 pounds. So Miller of Wacon beats guest of, Wa of Crestwood at uh, 140 or 160 pounds, that made it 42. So we have 170, 182. Looks like I've got 170 over here. 189 and 220, so we, uh, and uh, we do have one at 285, so we have five matches to go here. And we have Freed, place match. we have Frieden from Wacan went right after uh, Javier Pinero uh, with a quick takedown. And over here at 182 on mat number one, it will be Alex Kaler of Trail City, and take, he will take on Mark Farlinger of Crestwood. Yeah, Frieden's had a rough tournament here. 25-14 coming in, seated third. And he, so close to the finals, yeah, and now he he's led, wrestling he, for fifth. He led the kid from Waka, uh, from uh, Waverly Shell Rock the entire match. Had, I think, one time an eight-point lead on him. And then uh, gets pinned. Uh, Here's a uh, cradle and a 
And Kaler has Farlinger on his back right now with a minute 23 left here in the period. And there's the fall, 35 second fall for Alex Kaler of Charles City. And Kaler will move on and finish fifth here this afternoon. And anyway, then Frieden comes back in the consolations and the, the, the semis and the semis here, the backside of the bracket and gets pinned by Luke Dixon again with the lead. And uh, so now he's wrestling for fifth. But putting the hammer down, he's leading four to one right now over Javier Panero of New Hampton. Panero with a uh, five and 18 record. And uh, we will have uh, 220 coming up here. It'll be uh, Tyler Flock for Decoreth and Jared Knutson for Crestwood. If Frieden can go, that's how he got the lead on Trevor Byram, uh, who's uh, Waverly Shellrock is the second seed. And uh, of that's how he got the lead on Luke Dixon, too. But apparently has a little trouble going to his back, and, and uh, Byram pinned him, and, and so did Dixon. So we had a third seed here going for fifth. And uh, they're out head-to-head -head now, 4-2, with uh, an escape by Panero. 35 seconds left in the first period. As uh, pretty much ear to ear. Frieden's the aggressor. Panero looks like he'd like to throw in a headlock. Got a bit of a delay here on uh, mat number one. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe we got some uh, time delay here. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, now Frieden takes Panero right, back, right down to his back, getting back points. He needs to adjust head to head. He needs to adjust chest to chest. He's kind of belly to chest right now. And he like comes back. Time's up and he gets three point near fall. So he's going to lead 9 2 after the end of the first period. And Wakan defers. Panero goes down. Panero gets set. Frieden covers. Got a caution on Frieden. Again, got to put the arm around the waist. In this case, he didn't have it all the way, or he didn't have it as far as the navel. A lot of times, kids try to start with a really deep, tight waist to start with. And the official doesn't look down there to see it to get a little advantage. But in this case, he, he was really off to the side. Now he's got the arm bar, goes over the head. Not the eye, got the wing. And he's got to get the other leg over the head. He's got getting, getting back points. Pretty loose, but he's getting back points. Panero tries to turn the other way into him. Frieden tightens it up. He's got it pretty good and tight now, and he gets the fall. And uh, Frieden uh, ends his day. I imagine in the big picture, it's probably a disappointing day for him, but nonetheless, he ends it in style with the fall. At, uh, it's, all, it's, always nice, it's always nice to go home on a win. No doubt. And I think... Uh, I think they're moving down to one mat now just to avoid perhaps some uh, time considerations time perhaps. Considering, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually they're not. So <laughs> Otten Day or no uh, it's uh Otten Day you'll have Otten Day on your mat, David, yeah. uh, at uh, 190, 190 pounds. Uh, at uh, 195 and uh, Tyler Flock of Decora. And uh, Jared Knutson of Crestwood, and I think uh, the laces weren't secure, securely fastened for Tyler Flock, too, so Crestwood will start with a one nothing lead. How can you get this far into the tournament and, and not have your shoelaces fastened? Now, is one referee looking at things other guys can't, or what's... Perhaps. You know? And Ott has been in on a leg here for about the last 20 seconds. Hasn't been able to get Day down. Now he trips him to the mat, follows him down, and we get uh, Ott has first. Ott has the, uh, Daniel Ott has a two-point takedown. Ott comes out to the side. He's got a half in. He's got Day turned to his back. Day's going to roll through. Ott reverses the half. Nice to see. Little. Now he comes, tries to come cover the top of him. He's chest to chest. And... Uh, here is a uh, Flock uh, trying to get a takedown. He snapped down, but he didn't circle around, but he allows Knutson to get to his leg. Knutson has Ott up in the air, and 
Knutson covers up Flock, and it's a 3 nothing lead for uh, Knutson. Uh, uh, Daniel Ott's over the head, and he gets a fall. So 37 seconds left in the period. Uh, Daniel Ott with a fall. And the final fifth place uh, match is going to be uh, up on your mat. So Flock uh, gets out now, and it's a 3-1 match. Flock was penalized to point before the match for not having the shoelaces firmly attached. Apparently they secured. They, uh, uh, apparently uh, they were firmly attached for the first three matches of the day. Yeah, but, yeah. It is, it's but a, somebody else uh, sees things differently. Apparently. You know, here, is, uh, here is Flock with a takedown, and he's got Knutson on his back, but he's on the side of the mat. He's got to pull him back pulling, in, he's and he's, he's pulling doing pulling it. In. He's got Knutson on his back with 30 seconds left here in the period, and there's the fall. Tyler Flock ends the day in style with a fall in a minute 33 at 220 pounds. And uh, we're up here at the heavy match, 285. And we've got Gentry Miller from, uh, like, Waverly against uh, Lincoln Weber from New Hampton. And they are going to go right into the third place matches as Philip Eady will be up uh, here at 106 against uh, Derek Wyatt of Waverly Show Rock. And... Uh, Gentry Miller, rel relatively small heavyweight. Looks like he could uh, wrestle 220 if he wanted to, or could. Probably can't get in the lineup at that spot. But, uh, first period over. Or no, it's not. No, oh, 44 seconds left. That was just a uh, some kind of a Just wanted to restart the action. Stalemate, I guess, on your feet. Here is uh, Wyatt in on a shot of uh, Edie. He's able to stuff the head. 125 left here in the first period. Phillip trying to get back to his feet. And they wrestle out of bounds. With 110 left here in the period, or 118 left in the period, no score here in the third place match at 106. First nice. time I've ever seen a structure like this at a conference tournament. We had a nice pass by there by uh, Waverly, but uh, New Hampton came up behind and, and uh, turned the corner and, and came up on top right at the edge of the mat. But uh, so leads uh, New Hampton to nothing right there at the end over Gentry Miller. Scramble situation. Here is a potentially dangerous as the Wyatt had the uh, leg uh, corralled of Edie that time. And it was bent at a fun funny angle. So still scoreless, 42 seconds left here in the period. And here we have Weber from uh, New Hampton uh, out with a stand up and leading 3-0 uh, over Gentry Miller. Waverly Shell Rock. 28 seconds left in the period, 0-0 zero, zero between Decorah and Waverly Show Rock here at 106. And uh, both wrestlers trying to fight for hand control inside position. Miller obviously, or Weber obviously the larger of the two. A slide by try on a shot. Wyatt trying to stuff the head. Edie gets to a leg, but he runs out of time at a period, and it will be 0 0 as we go to period number two. Edie will start in the top position. Wyatt starts down. Edie able to break him down off the whistle. Third place match is underway at uh, 106 pounds. We're still at 285 in the uh, fifth place match here this afternoon. Miller tries to slide by. He's tried that about three times and it hasn't worked. He doesn't get the angle. Tries it again. Weber's a little hard to move. He's quite a little bigger than than uh, Gentry Miller. Yeah. 
AD out riding parallel, now grabs the wrist, tries to move it up on the back, works a little two on one on the side, now he works off to the side, working through the crouch area. Hasn't been able to lock any pinning combination up yet. 107 left here in the period. Now he has a arm bar in, now gets the wrist, he tries to run it. 59 seconds left here in the period. Miller's choice, and he's going to go on top. That's a little surprising. Yeah, he comes out front right away and tries to throw, tries to whip over, but doesn't work. So uh, Weber gets a kind of a free point there, and he's up for nothing. And a restart uh, here after a stalemate. 46 seconds left in the period. Edie has kept uh, Wyatt down as Wyatt tries to sit out, but Edie able to chop the legs down once again. Philip Edey has control of the wrist. And here we got Weber. Now has an arm bar. Weber with a takedown here for New Hampton to lead 6 0. Miller is up and escapes. Edey still has that arm bar reaching for the wrist. Hasn't been able to do it right now. Oh, nice headlock by Miller. Miller from Waverly threw a headlock. And uh, he's got uh, Weber tied up really good, but Weber uh, hooked a leg and rolled him through. And so we get three back from the two, 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 two takedown, three back for Miller, and two for uh, Weber. Makes it 6-5. Uh, Waverly coach Eight, is, uh, is complaining that Phillips slammed the kid, but it was nowhere near it. And he was acting like an idiot, and Mike Dernan is giving him a stern talking to it. That was worthy of a team point, if you ask me. He can stand up and act like an idiot on the side, and boy, show some class, you yeah. fool. And Edie able to ride out Wyatt uh, here in the third period. And Edie will start in the second period. Edie will start down here in the third period. It's still 0-0 between Edie and Wyatt. We've got uh, 10 seconds left, third period. And Edie now able to get to his feet, trying to establish some hand control. Hasn't been able to do it, and they go out of bounds. 153 left here in the third. Edie will start down, still zero, zero. And Weber from New Hampton with an 11-6 win over Gentry Miller from Waverly Shell Rock for the fifth place. And uh, Edie uh, get, got out, got out and got to his feet, but didn't establish any hand control, and Wyatt rides him out of bounds. 148 left here in the third period, 0-0 the score. Edie, quick off the whistle once again here, but circling around behind is Wyatt. Edie able to get to his feet. Wyatt does get a leg in on the way up. Edie trying to shake him free, but Wyatt keeps the hand control and returns him to the mat with a minute 33 left in the period. Now Phillip able to step over. Wyatt uh, still has control of Edie's legs to this point. Phillip trying to step over the leg. No, he is able over. to do it, and he gets the reversal, and Phillip takes a 2-0 lead on Daniel Wyatt of Waverly Show Rock. We've got Joe Kanoki here on the third place match against uh, Ryan Steffen from uh, Cedar Rapids, or excuse <laughs> Cresco, and uh, in the late in the day here. 105 uh, left here in the period. Edie leading by a 2 to nothing margin. Ryan in on a shot. He's got uh, Joe's leg. Joe's trying to come around behind. He's hooked uh, He's hooked Stefan's leg, but uh, still pretty much uh, out in front. Now he's down on an ankle and uh, needs to come up with it. Needs to come up with it. And uh, Edie was riding a little parallel. He gets dinged for stalling. A warning from Mike Denner. 51 seconds left here in the period. It's a 2 0 lead for Philip Edie. He gets a reversal here at the start of the third after riding out Derek Wyatt at the, uh, in the second period. Derek able to get to his feet. Edie able to lift him up and return him to the mat once again. 40 seconds left here in the third period. Put him down hard, too. That's just the way he didn't put him on his knees. He put him down flat. And he did that the last time, and the Waverly coach went nuts. That's all right. Let him go. They're not too far from there to start with. <laughs> anyway, we got... Uh, Double arm bar for Edie. Now he steps over. 20 seconds left oh, here in the he's period. Got them, he's got them tight. Got two of them. Got the both arms. Nah, he got tried one arm the free. one one way. Huh. Didn't work. Tried the other way. Didn't work. Now the one arm gets free. 12 seconds he's left got, in he's the got period. The double, he's got the double established again. 
And after he got seven, uh, seven. warned for stalling, he uh, totally woke up and just got uh, after it yes. big time. And yep. he steps over, and Philip Eadie's going to finish third place in the Northeast Iowa Conference this year as a freshman. And you know what? Third place in this league would win, I'd say, 50 to 60 percent of the league at that oh, yeah, class yeah, yeah, in this it's, state. Yeah, yeah. This was a tough, this was a tough six pound weight class. We're still nothing, nothing with five seconds to go. Edie uh, wins it by a two to nothing margin, so he will finish third today. And it's 0 0 between uh, Kenoki and his competitor, uh, Stephen, Stephen on Stephen. Uh, mat number two. We go to uh, 120 here at mat uh, number and these are the third one. It is Keaton Gertz in New Hampton and Carter Hubka of Decorah. And we got to get uh, 113 pounds. We got third and fourth seeds going at it. Uh, I suppose Steph as you should. Stefan starts down. Joe's on top. Uh, Joe Stefan. Here's uh, Gertz. Uh, Gertz has Carter cradled up, and he's on his back. Well, that was quick. 138 left here in the period. Carter's in a lot of trouble, and there's the fall. 25 second fall for he Keaton Gertz. He wasn't quite ready. Got to be ready on that whistle. That should have never happened. Uh, Carter Hook is a much better wrestler than that. But you got to be ready. The fall for Keaton Gertz at uh, 120 pounds, so Hupka will finish fourth. And Gertz, the three seed, finishes third. So we move on to 126 pounds. This will be an O-line Crestwood matchup. It will be Connor Slivka of Crestwood and Jake Kewins of of O-line. Right now it's Waverly Shellrock 183, New Hampton 161, Charles City up to third with 154, Crestwood in fourth with 153 and a half. Uh, Decorah is up to fifth with 147. And Owen in sixth with 142, walk on in seventh with 65 right now. And we got uh, Joe Kenoki out here. Uh, score is uh, nothing, nothing. Second period. Joe's been putting a tough ride on, but he gets called for stalling here for hanging. Uh, Stefan has been doing a lot of setting out. Joe's been following him. But uh, now it looks like we got blood here on the part of Ryan Stefan. And uh, Joe gets a chance to get a little advice from Coach Friedhoff, Coach Adams, Coach Sackwitney. And uh, looking at uh, a little cotton plug in the uh, nose and the nostril of uh, Ryan Stephan. And 53 seconds left in this uh, And now Connor Slifka has a uh, Hewins of O-line cradled up pretty tight. 105 left here in the period. Hewins trying to kick out of it, and there's the fall. Connor Slifka, who was the three seed, ends the day with a 59-second fall earning third place here at 126 pounds. And we've got uh, Stefan uh, coming to his feet now. Joe locks his hands at 40 seconds left. Lifts him up, takes him back to the mat. Stefan tries to switch. Joe locks it nicely. Uh, Joe's riding a little bit high. A lot of chest pressure up over the, uh, a little bit high. Stefan turns, comes out to face him. Looks like he's gonna get one and he does. One nothing, Ryan Stefan ahead of Joe Kenoki. Joe makes a shot from a long ways away. Stefan blocks it, uh, can't come around behind. Joe blocks it with an arm. And both on their feet facing each other, arms kind of tied up. Stefan makes the shot. Makes the shots pretty deep, pretty deep. He's got the four, he's got the tricep. He held the tricep and turned it into a Kelly. Got the take down to lead three nothing. At 145 here on mat number one, it is Jake Nickel of Charles City and Adam Benzing of Wacon. 0 0, 20 seconds into this one. And that was right at the end of the period, so Joe had no time to reply. So we've got Ryan Stuffin with a uh, 3 to nothing lead against Joe Kenoki. And both of them with identical records coming into the tournament 22 and 8. And uh, Stefan putting a tough ride on top here. Joe moves to a sit position. Now he comes back to his knees. Two on one wrist ride by Stefan. I can't keep that up very long. I, that stalling for sure. Now he lets go of the wrist. One zero hand. zero over here with a minute 15 left in the first period. Now Joe moves into a sit position. Stefan comes up. Joe start. Joe turns, tries to grab the head, doesn't get it. Stefan gets him stretched out toward the edge of the mat here. Tries to load him up. Can't do it. On there, right on the edge, just will be out of bounds, and he finally calls it. 52 seconds left in the period here at 145, the third place match. Nickel and Benzing. 
Nickel, who was the two seed, Benzing, who was the four seed, and and Benzing got poked in the eye, so a little bit of injury time for him. And we'll be back wrestling now. Seven still on top, still leading three to nothing. Minute five left to go. Joe's working, trying to get some arm, get his arms free underneath. Stefan putting a lot of pressure on. He gets called for stalling. About the same call that Joe got earlier in the match, so I guess for Mr. Reckman catching on here. The inconsistent. That's and, okay. uh, and now uh, Nickel has Benzing on his back with 14 seconds left here in the first period. Three back points awarded. Benzing Joe. able to get out of it. Joe to his feet, turns, faces him. 3-1 now. 51 seconds left. Two-point lead for Ryan Steffen. Nickel leads 5-0 going to the second period on Benzing. And uh, Joe's got to get after it here. But I remember they've each got Stalin call. Joe, of course, they have no point in stalling. D pushes a little bit too hard. Steffen drops in underneath on a head outside single. High crotch. Joe's pushing the head down, working hard to push the head down. Can't break the arms. Got to lift that. Got to lift that wrist up. And stalemate. Nickel starts in the down position uh, to start the second period. He's in a five to nothing lead. Benzing try to put the legs in. Has the arms wrapped up, but he's riding a little high here. Stefan staying in position. Joe's in on the leg. Stefan sprawling toward the edge of the mat. Seven seconds left. Seven seconds. And time run out of time. Three to one loss for Joe Kanoki to Ryan Stefan. Did he had beaten earlier? But uh, two pretty uh, pretty evenly matched uh, kids there. And and uh, Pinocchi uh, beat him twice, yeah. and uh, Stefan gets him the third time here at conference. A 7 nothing lead here at 45 for Nickel on Benzing. Here at uh, mat number one at 145. And looks like you'll have 52 there, uh, David, or uh, I take that back. It's, uh, 32? 32, yep. 32, and we've got uh, Leinhardt uh, from Dresco uh, and uh, Snicker from Wakan. Nichols still leading over here at 45 on Benzing by a 7 0 margin. And again, 3 and 4 seed. Uh, Leinhardt, the uh, third seed, went in after a shot, didn't get it. Snicker stepped back. Mitchell Snicker, 23 and 16, a freshman, and uh, Chase Leinhardt, uh, 30 and 7, a junior. Leinhard with double underhooks, starting there he gets a body lock. Jacked up the double underhooks, come into a body lock, but they go out of bounds. A 7-0 lead for Nickel here on Benzing as we go to the end of the second period. And the Mitchell Snitker, a freshman, might be a little susceptible to things like body locks and double underhooks, but fortunately got out of bounds there. Leg shot, sprawl by Snitker. They come back face to face. 152 left here in the third period. A 7 0 lead for Nickel on Benzing here at 145. And we're still nothing, nothing here. 29 seconds left to go in the first period between Michael Snick Mitchell Snitker. And now uh, Leonard is in on the leg, and Leonard trips, throws him backwards, but uh, Snitker recovers nicely, comes back. Now he drops him hard, and uh, he's got the two points. So Chase Leonard leads uh, Mitchell Snitker to nothing. And 13 left here in the third period over here. Nickel of Charles City who was the two seed, tried to finish third. He leads it seven to nothing here in period number three. Stalemate on the side of the mat, actually an illegal hold 
is going to be called on, uh, I believe, Benzing here. And yep. it'll be an 8 nothing lead on Nickel. Well, Matt, two here. Leinart starts the second period underneath. Comes to his feet, looking for hand control. And they get Snicker called for stalling there because not taking him down. And uh, Leinart gets away anyway. And that probably wasn't too bad a stalling call because Snitker was really just hanging on. Anyway, he really wasn't trying to bring him back to the mat. And that's what the rule book says you got to do. you got to make an effort to bring that guy back to the mat, not just hang on. So, Matt, score here is 3 nothing. 15 seconds left in the period as Nickel gets stinged for potentially dangerous. So, Nickel is going to win here at uh, 145 pounds on Adam Benzing. Benzing able to get out for the time being, reaches for the headlock, but Nickel able to put him up in the air, tries to return him, but Benzing still with that headlock, trying to throw him. Nickel is unable to let him do it here, and Nickel's actually going to end up with a, uh, another takedown. We got Leonard in deep on the legs here, uh, just as uh, 40 seconds left in the second period to lead 5-0. Uh, Nickel leads it by a 12 to nothing margin. And uh, Cole uh, Denner and uh, Andrew Koresh will be on mat number one for the third place match here at 160. We've got uh, Leonard uh, got the legs tied up, looking to turn the shoulders of uh, Michael Snicker. Doesn't get it done. In the second period, five nothing. Chase Leonard over Mitchell Snicker. Snicker's choice, he's going to go down. We're into the third place matches, and after this, uh, just title bouts to go. And we got, uh, I expect they'll run them on, apparently run them on two mats like they're running these. Uh, it must be a time situation. I, I'm snow, guessing time it might snow. be a uh, weather situation. Yeah, time and snow. You want to get everybody home safely and everything like that. And the matches will get wrestled. Yep. Matches will get wrestled. Because I I've never seen a structure like this before at a conference wrestling tournament. Have you? No, they generally run thirds and five thirds on one match, finals on the other, and then they alternate mats. Now we've got one point for Mitchell Snicker for an escape. He hit five to one. One minute twenty-one left in this third period. 122 left here in the first period at 160. It's Denner of New Hampton and Korish of Carroll City, both uh, men scoreless as we wrestle here in period number one. Well, we got one minute left here at 132. And we've got. Uh, here is Denner with a uh, takedown on Korish to make it a 2 0 advantage. Korish able to bail out of it as Denner went for the half. And. Uh, 5-1, Leonard ahead of uh, Snicker from Wakan. Leonard in on a leg when they go out of bounds. Come back to the center here. And Denner uh, now tilting uh, Korish in this situation. 35 seconds left here in the period. Korish trying to post the arm to give him some leverage, keep those shoulders off the mat. Ackerman down, giving a quick look, and now Korish is able to step over. Three back points awarded to Denner, Denner and uh, no reverse, or now a reversal is awarded to Korish, and it's a 5-2 lead. For Cole Denner here at 160 pounds in the third place match here at the Conference Wrestling Tournament. And a nice double leg shot here by uh, Reinhardt, but uh, they're going to run out of time here as they go off the edge of the mats and the score will end up 5-1. to one. Uh, Chase Leinert of Wacon over Mitchell Snicker of Wacon. 5-1 at 132 for third. So 
the cadets getting a third place finish with Chase Lenhart there. We go to the second period with uh, Denner leading by a 5-2 margin over here. He'll start in the down position. He'll quickly get to his feet and escape to make it a 6-2 margin. And let's see. Looks like we've got uh, Waverly and Crestwood here, third. Yep, uh, that's 38, Pekinowski and Woodward. Woodyard, as Denner uh, gets out and gets taken down to make it 8-2. They're at 160. And there we go. And uh, Woodyard, actually a four seed. And 18-23 uh, record and a freshman from Waverly. And uh, Trey Pesanowski, a 31-10 and 10, uh, sophomore. Woodyard is in on a shot here. That's Pesanovsky in on a shot. And another uh, matchup here at 160 where it's the three versus the four. In fact, if you look at the finals this afternoon, 14 number one seeds, eight number two seeds, six number three seeds. That means the uh, seeds seeding meeting was pretty much done right. Pretty much. You know, if anyone has wrestled above their seed, it's, it's been Waverly. And uh, that's why they're at the 30 point, almost 30 point lead. Yep. And here, an illegal hold is going to be called on the Charles City kid, Korish, as he was bending the ankles uh, or the toes back in the opposite direction of what the body was at. And we've got a uh, takedown by Pesanovsky here. And uh, Pesanovsky has the second seed. He was upset by Ryan Gorman from New Hampton in the uh, semis. Woodyard from uh, Waverly is actually the fourth seed, so. Forty-two seconds left here in the period. Denner still leading by a nine to two margin. Pesanowski, I'm sure, is disappointed not being in the finals. The number one seed, uh, Maxwell Forces, has a record of 26-10, which actually isn't quite as good as, as Pesanowski's is, so I'm sure maybe he was looking ahead a little bit, thinking, uh, Get a chance at chance at uh, forces in the finals, but can't look ahead. And uh, consequently, anyway, he's he's uh, wrestling for third. Wrestling pretty tough. That hit two to nothing over Dalton Woodyard. Twenty-two seconds left here in the second period. It's a nine-two lead for Denner. Trying to reach back his Korish and get that head, but Denner trying to tilt him. He's able to get two points on the back, and it's an eleven-to-two lead now for Korish. Start of the second period here, 138. Uh, Pesanovsky, Crestwood decides to go down. Dalton Woodyard set on top. Pesanovsky tries to switch. Uh, stop, block there, good shoulder pressure by uh, Pesanovsky. Pesanovsky comes up, or uh, Woodyard comes up, tries for a cradle. Good hand control by Pesanovsky. Pesanovsky's turning into him, trying to catch a leg, snag a leg, and, and uh, doesn't get it. Uh, Woodyard follows on behind real nicely. Uh, up a little high. Trying to drag Presnowski back. presnowski has got hand control. Stick on the stick that hand over the head if he can. Comes down, posts the hand. Uh, Woodyard follows behind. Presnowski changes direction, comes out in front. And 130 left here in the third period. Denner leading by an 11 to 2 margin. The New Hampton Charles City matchup here. So Trey Pesanowski ahead three to nothing over Dalton and Woodyard to Waverly Shell Rock. And a takedown here for the Charles City wrestler Kurish, and that makes it an 11 to 4 matchup. Woodyard a uh, little heavy on Pesnowski's head. Pesnowski decides maybe he can be heavy on the head too. Pesnowski tries a two on one. Uh, Woodyard makes a shot. Pesnowski sprawls, gets his hips back. Woodyard extended a long ways. Pesnowski with a power half in from the front. Uh, Woodyard comes up, takes it off the head. Dalton Woodyard for a freshman is a pretty tough kid. And uh, he'll do well. 34 seconds left here on uh, mat number one. It is an 11 to four lead for uh, Cole Denner. They go near the edge of the mat there and it's the uh, end of the second period. Pesnowski leads three to nothing. 
and it's Woodyard's choice and uh, he's gonna go down I'm sure the idea is to get out get away and get a takedown tie score up Pesnowski covers rides an ankle to stop stand up Working hard on top to get an arm behind uh, Woodyard's back. And uh, over here, uh, Denner finishes off the victory at 160 pounds. He wins 11-4 over Korish of Charles City. And over here at 160, it'll be Luke Dixon for the core up. Dixon and Peterson, Tanner Peterson of Charles City. Peterson defeated Dixon in the first round today by a 13 to 8 margin. Dixon getting to a leg right away. Peterson able to sprawl, get the hips back. We got Pesnovsky riding tough on top of uh, Woodyard. Uh, got him broke down, extended, still holding a three to nothing lead with a minute eight seconds left. Pesnovsky really, really tying the tying the wrists up, ground tight waist now. Comes out the other side, out bringing the other wrist through, a real tight waist. <laughs> Here is uh, Dixon it, still hanging on that leg, trying to get back is uh, his opponent, the uh, Charles City wrestler Peterson. Peterson having to hang on it, step through, take Dixon down to the mat, and take a 2 nothing lead during the first period in, in, of this one. Means nothing in that match. <laughs> well, until Luke's down 15 to nothing, it ain't over. That's right. That's right. Until there's less than two seconds left. And uh, we still got Trey Pesanowski out to the side now. Got uh, wrist uh, uh, controlled. Now he comes over the leg, tries, tries to tie a leg up. Uh, seven seconds left. And Pe Peterson now has uh, three nothing. Dixon uh, tied up. Yeah, Dixon good, is on his back with 38 seconds left here in the period. Got a good cradle there. And uh, on this mat, on 138 pounds, Trey Pesanowski is the third place wrestler. And, uh, Nixon able to fight to, off his back nothing. for the moment. And there's the fall. Peterson gets the fall in a minute 39 on Luke Dixon. That's why that takedown meant something. Yep. <laughs> Put him in position to get the fall. So Pekanowski gets third at 138. And Peterson gets third at 160. And let's go to 182 now. Andy Lilligreven of Decorah to Robbie McKeeman of Owine. Uh, McKeeman is really, really dangerous. He, he'll, uh, he's unorthodox and he can pin. On my mat over here at 152 between uh, Neil Clement from uh, Cresco and uh, Brandon Childs of Charles City. Uh, looks like uh, we're going to go out of bounds, no score. Neil Clement, the seconds from Crestwood, the second seed. Brandon Childs, the fourth seed. Uh, Neil Clement uh, would be here, except that there uh, would be in the finals, except he got uh, pinned by uh, Cole Stanford, the third seed from uh, Owine. Owine putting five wrestlers into the finals this afternoon. And forever and a day since that happened, so credit Coach yep. Castley and uh, more importantly, the young men uh, for getting the work done. That's right. That's right. That can't be can't be easy to, to build on a team that's been as down as far as O line. That's uh, the real credit to them. But they've uh, I know they've vastly improved their youth program and it's uh, starting to pay some dividends on the varsity level now. Yeah. One minute left here in the first period. Little Graven and Keen McKeeman scoreless. And uh, we've got. Childs come in on a shot, but uh, Clement breaks it easily. 
Clement must have a, maybe perhaps a little eye trouble or something. Yeah, maybe he was poked. I don't know if he's wearing glasses. It's something you don't very well see out here. There's a special kind of glasses that fit really, really close into the eye socket. And that's what uh, Neil Clement is wearing. And Gresswood. Get well, from. Will Agreeman and McKeeman still scoreless with 23 seconds left here in the first period over here. It was a uh, kid from Lehigh a number of years ago. I think it wore uh, glasses also in the national finals. Did certainly not, not usual. Here is a throw for Andy Lilligram, but he stepped out of bounds before he connected with the throw. Nine seconds left here in the first period scoreless match. And we're still nothing, nothing. First period, uh, Clement and Giles. Clement come in with a 31 and nine record, a junior. Giles, 22 and nine. Also a junior. Pretty good records uh, for kids going for third. Clement, of course, uh, was the second seed. Zero, zero as we go to the second period over here at 182. Lola Graven uh, with a neutral restart uh, against McKeeman. Uh, updated team scores right now. New Hampton has pulled within 13 and a half of Waverly Show Rock. Waverly Show Rock with 183 and a half. New Hampton uh, second with 169. Crestwood third with 163 and a half. Charles City fourth, 161. Decorah fifth with 149. Owine sixth with 142. Walk on seventh with 65. That is your updated team standings right now. And then we got a takedown by Brandon Childs of uh, Charles City. Uh, go up two to one over uh, Neil Clement of Cresco. Second period, minute 15 left, 152 pounds. It's so again a pretty tough weight class here. Seth Walker, uh, number one seed, had 30 wins. Uh, Brandon Childs, the fourth seed, had 22 wins. And Cole Stanford, the third seed, had 36 wins. And Clement has 31 wins here at second seed. A lot of wins amongst these kids. Lola Graven up uh, one nothing on Robbie McKeeman here with 48 seconds left here in the second period. Childs is in on the legs, uh, comes up around the waist. Uh, Clement tries a neck wrench there, but they roll through. Uh, Clement is still reaching behind for that neck wrench, and they're out of bounds, and there's no point scored. 25 seconds left here in the second period. A 1-0 lead for Andy Lilligaven. He tries for the big throw once again on the side of Ant, and they go out of bounds. With 21 seconds left here in the period. Both men looking for the throw now with 15 seconds left in the period. Andy stepping through, landing on McKeeman on his back. He gets the takedown. He's getting back he with five seconds he's, left he's here in the period. Stretching the legs out. Andy Lilligraven has McKeeman on his back, and McKeeman is going to get saved by the buzzer of the period. It's a 6 nothing lead for Andy Lilligraven on the big throw at the end of the second period. Now he's got to stay out of the big throws. Just, just wrestle smart. 4-2 over here. Brandon Childs going down. Start third period against Neil Clement. Got a fourth seed here ahead of a third, a second seed. McKeeman starts in the down position against Lola Graven. He's able to roll through, tie up the legs of Andy. Andy reaches for the ankle of McKeeman. We've got Clement riding tough on top. He's got a half in. Child, pretty good job of reaching up, pulling it off. Got a cradle now, looking for a cradle. Clement looking for a cradle. I think he's got it locked up. Nope. Andy able to step through, through and re stay in the top position. It's a 6 nothing lead for Andy as we wrestle with a minute 22 left here in the third period. Nice sit and turn by Childs, but he's not out yet. Uh, Clement hanging, hanging heavy on the arms. Now he comes around behind. Riding straddle of him. Working hard, working hard on the wrists. Oh, he's riding an ankle. Brandon Childs, Carl City on the bottom. Clement comes up with a half. 
and an, a potentially dangerous hold called here on mat number one. Lil Graven still leading 50 seconds left here in the third period. Lil Graven trying to become the second Viking freshman to finish third here after Philip Eady did earlier today. Clement out to the side trying to get to get up on the over the head of Childs. He got a half in. Uh, Childs has a leg hooked. It's going to be hard to turn him with that leg hooked. And uh, but Clement, is, Clement is driving hard toward the head. Driving hard toward the head. But uh, I have to say, uh, Childs is over the, uh, over the leg. To make it hard for Clement to get out to the side where he can put the pressure on. Now uh, Childs reaches up, tries to pick up Clement's head. Now he comes to his feet. Uh, Clements tries to take him back down to the mat. There's six seconds left. Ola Graven uh, still riding tough with 19 seconds left. McKeeman able to get to his feet. He'll get the escape with 12 seconds left at 6-1, Andy. And it looks like uh, Clement is going to end up with a 4-2 win. So Neil Clement is the 4-2 winner over uh, four seed Brandon Childs. And this one is about done as McKeeman rose for the big throw and doesn't hit it. And Andy Lilligraven is going to finish third for the Decorah Vikings. Andy Lilligraven, a 6-1 win here. So he will head to sectionals next week after a third place finish here at this match. And that's a big one, too, against Gensd Olwine if we're trying yep. to stay ahead of them in the team places, team scores. And uh, you're over there and at 195, 195. with uh, Jacobs and Trendy, Charles City, and Crestwood. And uh, just like the last one. And over here at 220, I've got Logan, or uh, I'm sorry, Noah Hop and uh, Caleb Rinkin for Waverly Show Rock. And in this case, Trendy, uh, Trevor Trendy from Waverly Show Rock comes I mean, the four seed, 22-22 record. Nick Jacobs was the second seed with the 22 and 12 record, but he got uh, pinned by uh, Jameer Moore from Waverly Show Rock in the semis. Uh, and a quick takedown for uh, Rinkin, a quick escape for Hop, and it is a, or they gave the takedown to Hop and the escape to Rinkin is 2-1. It's another big match as far as team score goes. You bet. And, uh, Championship bouts uh, coming up uh, after this one. One more third place bout to go. We're at 95 and 220 here in the third place bouts, and the championship bout is at 285. Oh, now we've got uh, Charles City with a nice takedown. Uh, took uh, Trendy to his back to get uh, three near falls as well as the two takedowns. So uh, Nick Jacobs comes up uh, uh, two, two near fall, I guess. Jacobs up 4 nothing. Jacobs a junior, Trendy a sophomore. Now we've got uh, Jacobs uh, turning uh, Trendy. He's got the leg turked. A little leg turk come across the throat. And uh, now he's got him coming out chest to chest. Trying to finish Trendy to get to turn him to his back. Still 2-1 still over here uh, between Hop and, Hop and uh, Rinkin at uh, 220 pounds. And we got three more points for uh, Nick Jacobs, Charles City. Here at 195. Jacobs on top. And riding on the wrist, period ends. 7 nothing. Nick Jacobs over Trevor Trendy. And uh, Trendy, or, or Jacobs rather, decides they're going to go neutral. Welcome back to the 2015 And uh, Trendy put a little pressure there, back and uh, Jacobs out of bounds. And back to the center. We've got uh, Hop and Rinkin over here on mat one. Two to one, uh, looks like Hop ahead. And on mat two over here, it's still seven nothing. And we've got uh, Jacobs uh, picked up Trendy, put him in the mat for two. Just a body lock, turned him across parallel to the, parallel to, to the mat and put him down. And uh, now he tries to tilt, and he got a one count. Now he got a two count, three, four. Now there's a five count, so he's got another three points for uh, Nick Jacobs. Make it 12-0. On the other mat, uh, Rinkin has uh, 
Hops leg up in the air. And uh, tries to come over, looks like, for Cradle. Hop uh, changes direction a little bit and uh, gets a two-point take down the edge of the mat. And so Hop's going to lead 4-1 to one now, Noah Hop. At 2.20. And uh, here we've got uh, Nick Jacobs with another uh, tilt over Trevor Trendy. And he's got two that time. Or I guess he's got maybe three. Makes it 12, 15, nothing. And uh, so Jacobs will get uh, 15. The O, technical fall over Trevor Trendy of uh, Crestwood. So Jacobs gets third. And over here on the other mat, we have uh, Hop and uh, New Hampton, Waverly Shell Rock. And again, that's a uh, head to head, the two leading teams in the tournament. Looks like Rinkin tries for a headlock. He bounces Hop down, but no control, and, and Hop comes up to face him. Now he tries another throw from the other direction, uh, and referee calls it uh, potentially dangerous. Second period, we're still 4 2 with Noah Hop of uh, Crestwood in the lead. We're up in a heavyweight match here, and it looks like uh, Prescott's got uh, O-line down with a headlock. And uh, 285. Yeah, Hoppin' Rinkin over here. And uh, it's still 4-2, second period. A 285-pound match. Iverson from... Uh, Crestwood has the uh, takedown, and uh, or excuse me, uh, Olwine got the takedown. Iverson got the reverse, so it makes it two-two. Olwine is Horan, and uh, between him and uh, Alan Iverson, two-two. Still in the second period over here, two-twenty with uh, Rinkin from uh, Waverly Shell Rock and Hop from New Hampton. They're head to head here. I'm on the mat, 4-2 score with Hop ahead. And there we got a takedown for Noah Hop on the edge of the mat. And uh, Caleb Rinkin seated fifth. Noah Hop seated third. Nine seconds left. Rinkins down behind 6 2. We've got a Stalin call over there in the 220 pound match against Noah Hop. He still leads 6 2. And we got uh, Caleb Rinkin going down over in the heavyweight match. It's uh, end of the first period. It's still 2-2 between uh, Alan Iverson from uh, Crestwood, the second seed, and uh, Henry Horan, the fourth seed from uh, Waverly. Or excuse me, Olwine. Henry Horan from Olwine on top. Uh, Alan Iverson gets to his quickly gets to his feet, comes around behind uh, Henry Horan for a two-point reversal to lead two to four. 4-2 here, Allen Iverson over Henry Horan. And we've got uh, Noah Hopp riding uh, Rinkin from Waverly Shell Rock. Rinkin's up and out to go 6-3. Uh, Noah Hopp over Caleb Rinkin. Hop doing a little pushing. Rinkin would sure like to try headlock there. Go out of bounds. Coach Geertz uh, telling Hop to watch for that headlock. Looks like we've got blood time here for uh, Henry Horan. And we got a stalling call against Tyler Rinkin for backing out. And that's one more point for Noah Hop. Makes it 7-3.
And we've got uh, Alan Iverson on top of Henry Horan riding it pretty tough. Now he's got it broke over to his back. Henry Horan get through. Iverson catches the arm, goes around the head. Nope, doesn't go all the way around. Still, still driving, He's driving chest to chest, and uh, still hasn't had any back points. No count yet. Trying to lift, the, trying to lift the arm. Put Henry Horn on his back. And here we've got uh, Allen Iverson with a. It's a seven to three wire. lead for New Hampton. Here at uh, 220 pounds. Now we're getting back points out here by uh, Allen Iverson over Henry Horan. And Iverson got him on his back. Horan trying to roll through, and he did. But he's going to get three points here for Allen Iverson, make it 7 2 over Henry Horan. 7 3, the uh, advantage here for a uh, hop on Rankin of Waverly Shell Rock. And uh, Rinkin goes for the big throw. Hop chases him out of bounds, and Rinkin ran out of bounds, and Rinkin Hop got a point. Rinkin uh, ran out of bounds, so Hop's going to get a point. He's fleeing the mat. And it's going to be a seven to four victory for Noah Hop, getting third place here at 220 pounds. And it looks like uh, they might break down to one mat here for the finals. Oh. As they're taking the tape off of the center mat right now. Okay, I guess they are. So, so much for the snow, so much for the weather problem. Well, okay. Hey, we're tough Iowans, we can handle it. I guess, I'm riding with you, so. Well, you can handle it. And uh, Joel can always drive if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now we've got 7-2 uh, lead uh, by Allen Iverson over Henry Horan here from Old Wine. And again, this is good for Decorah if we want to move up the team standings. And I'll try to get an update on this team standings. Uh, no longer do you have to have uh, friends at the head table who treat you well. Uh, this track wrestling thing makes you sound smarter than you deserve to. Uh, that's nice. It's all computer computer scored. I remember one time in a sectional tournament, uh, we beat, I think, Independence by two points. And, uh, of course, that qualified us for the state team duels. And somebody said, well, I suppose you're going to really go over that team score on the way home on the bus. And I said, no, I'm going to look at it. I'll let, old, let We know Independence will be doing it. Yep. <laughs> if they come up with a change, then I'll look at the team score. As they are rolling up the uh, mat on the, uh, on the mat to our right right now. So let's... Uh, and we're still in third period, minute 21 left. Allen Iverson, uh, Allen Iverson, Henry Horan are on their feet with Iverson holding a 7-2 lead. Both boys kind of tied up with collar ties. Miss Horan has a collar tie. And so does Iverson. Well, you know what? It is down to a nine and a half point margin between Waverly and New Hampton. Again, Waverly with eight matches, uh, wrestlers in the finals, and uh, New Hampton with five wrestlers in the finals. They will go head to head at 113 and at 182. Okay. And of course, you know, is it four, four points difference between first and second place? And uh, 12 versus 16 points. Right now it's Waverly Shellrock at 183 and a half. New Hampton second at 173. Crestwood third, 165 and a half. Charles City fourth, 164 and a half. Decora fifth, 151 and a half. Owine sixth, 142. Walk on seventh with 65. <coughs> we, we've picked up a lot of points in those fifth place matches. Well, and, and, the, and, and some bonus points yeah. as well. Yep. So, so the Go Hawks. Uh, Trying to win their 11th consecutive uh, team title here in the Northeast Iowa Conference. Uh, yeah, they've got more uh, wrestlers than anybody else uh, in the finals, but you got to win them. You got to win them. New, 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 New Hampton back within striking distance. Yep, now. they are. And, and New uh, Hampton, the last team to win a Northeast Iowa Conference title, other than uh, Crestwood. As Iverson gets the uh, at 7 0. Huh? Yep, win at uh, 285 pounds. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many people that, in a way, you know, that, that, that Waverly Shell Rock have in the finals because if you don't win, you don't score anymore because everybody, everybody right now has been scored for second place. Yep. And, uh, and uh, after that, 
match there. So right now, first to third is separated by 16 points. Second to fifth, separated by 21 and a half points. Oh boy, this thing's uh, a lot of sweaty palm times for a lot of people around here. Yeah, it's it's gonna be very very close. Oh, they're gonna well, darken the gym and go to the spotlight situation. I'm sitting. Uh, <laughs> I got people like Tyler Bowes, Neil Stone, and Dave Anderson up here. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got Dave Omdahl to protect me up here in the dark. So. <laughs> I think there's some of them rolling up there harmless. Yeah, well, I'd like to think so. I know Any, better with Anderson, but... Yeah. <laughs> He's just a kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a Waverly's favorite would be favored in that uh, probably 32 of Sands. So as long as uh, we got a few minutes here, we're going to take a time out and uh, hear from some of our good sponsors today for Decor of Viking Wrestling at KDECradio.com.